Hello students how are you all this is Anup sir your english teacher from Devashya International Public School Students in this video we will understand the lesson number 3 that is glimpses of the past in this lesson we are going to understand some of the points about the past which gave a rise to the independence fight so at first let me give you some introduction about this lesson this lesson shows us the history of our country during 1757 to 1857 india was under british rule during this period indian prince were dethroned by the british east indian company indian people led a miserable life during this period in every field many learned men gathered the people of india and told them to against the british raj in 1857 a revolt outbroke and the consequence of that revolt paved the way to the first freedom fight against british rule in india here are some pictorial glimpses of the history of our country from 1757 to 1857 these pictures are speech bubbles will help you classify your understanding of the conditions that led to the event known as the first war of independence in 1857 so students this lesson is introduced to us with few pictures which will help us understand the condition of the people during that time and what exactly happened during the year 1757 to 1857 which led to the first war of independence so let us start reading the speech bubbles we will try to understand this lesson page by page at a function in delhi o oh my countrymen let your eyes fill with tears as you recall the sacrifices of indian martyrs here at a function in delhi it was spoken to the people that they should recall the sacrifices of indian martyrs the people who sacrificed their life and the family for the independence of india the company's conquest 1757 to 1849 with its superior weapons the british east indian company was extending its power in 18th century india in this first speech bubble there's a map shown here in which the yellow color indicates indian princes territories and the pink color shows british territories Indian princes were short-sighted that upstart Raja Ba called the English merchants they will help me to defeat him the people had no peace during such constant fights the rivalries helped the East Indian company and it could easily subdue Indian prince one by one a far seeing ruler like the brave tipu of mysore fought the british till he died fighting how indians react to these conquests thank god there is peace in the country now no more wars and no looting by thugs it is god who sent the british our destiny is linked with them the white man has killed or dethroned our kings some kings were not good but after all they were of this land now we have become slaves of foreigners so students in india of 1757 the east indian company was in a strong position compared to the indian prince they had superior weapons besides Indian prince were short sighted in their approach to the events of the time Indian prince were fighting each other 
they often asked to help of the company to defeat other princes this worked in favor of the company it could easily subdue these princes one after the other however the brave tipu sultan of mysore fought the british he died in the battlefield fighting the english the general reaction to the british rule was not the same everywhere in india there were some people who thanked british for ushering in an era of peace others blamed that the country was subject to the foreign rule british rule 1765 to 1836 religious leaders preached idea like untouchability and child marriage anyone who crosses the sea loses his religion all the misery in the world is due to women the truth was that indians had lost self respect the british scorned them the natives are unworthy of trust incapable of honesty true your honor but i am honest being merchants the british wanted quick profit their heavy taxes forced farmer to abandon their fields but your men are taking all my crops you are still in errors if you don't pay next week i will send you to jail still the british invented other methods which gave them more profits the goods manufactured in england should not have any import duties when brought into india a good idea the east indian companies laws began to cripple indian industries inevitably famines followed between 1822 and 1836 15 lakh indians died of starvation the british policies ruined the expert artisans and their businesses so students the social fabric was in bad shape religious leaders preached absurd practices like untouchability and child marriage so this brought a far difference between the high caste and the low caste people in india and children at a very small age were married in fact indians had lost their self respect the british scorned them though the indian people worked for these britishers but they did not respect indian people the farmers and the artisans were in the worst condition heavy taxes ruined the farmers the british cut the thumbs of expert artisans the british used every method to make maximum profits the imports from england became tax free ram mohan roy 1772 to 1833 ram mohan roy a learned man from bengal understood what was wrong with the country let us not despite ourselves our ancient culture is great and we are capable of great achievements we must first reform our society superstitions have been ruining us he told his wife uma cows are of different colors but the color of their milk is the same different teachers have different opinions but the essence of every religion is the same he was attracted by science and modern knowledge knowledge should be practical and scientific he started newspapers but the suspicious british stopped them in 1823 he crossed the sea and went to england to see what made the british powerful there he told them we accept you as rulers and 
you must accept us as subjects. But you must remember the responsibility a ruler owes to his subjects. Students, Ram Mohan Roy understood what was wrong with the country. He tried to reform the society. He taught people that the main precepts of all religions were the same. He emphasized the practical use of knowledge. He went to England. There, he reminded the British that rulers too had a duty towards the subjects. He started printing newspapers in India. But the suspicious Britishers stopped Raja Ram Mohan's newspaper in 1823. Operation 1765-1835 But the British continued to oppress Indians. In 1818, they had passed Regulation Act 3. Under it, an Indian could be jailed without trial in a court. All the time, British officers in India drew big salaries and also made fortunes in private businesses. By 1829, Britain was exporting British goods worth 7 crore rupees to India. The British prospered on the company's loot, while Indian industries began to die. Governor General Bentinck reported back home. The bones of cotton weavers are bleaching the plains of India. So students, in 1818, a resolution was passed under which an Indian was sent to the jail without proving himself right or wrong inside the courtroom. The British workers working for the company got a very huge salary, but the Indian people who were working for the company got very less amount of money for their work. British people even earned a very huge amount of money through the businesses in India. By 1829, Britain was exporting their goods worth 7 crore rupees to India. Even the British Governor General of India, Bentick, reported to England, the bones of cotton weavers are bleaching the plains of India. Thus, the British prospered on the ruins of Indian industry. Dissatisfaction, 1835 to 1856. Education in India was in Persian and Sanskrit. In 1835, an English man named Macaulay suggested a change. We should teach the native through the English language. I agree. English education produced clerks to whom the English gave pity jobs under them. Incidentally, it also produced a new generation of intellectuals. We must educate our brothers and try to improve their material conditions. For that, we must convey our grievances to the British Parliament. By 1856, the British had conquered the whole of India. In this map, the pink color shows the area which was covered by the Britishers. They cared little about the needs of Indians. Our kings have become puppets and we have lost our old jobs and lands. They are converting our brothers. You only talk. Do something to drive them out. So students, in 1835, Lord Macaulay suggested that the medium of education in India should be English and not Sanskrit or Persian. Due to this, the Britishers got a large amount of people working for them who were bit intelligent. This was also a positive point towards India because due to this uh, new education system, India got a new generation of intellectuals. 
these educated Indians tried to educate other people of India. Some people decided to convey the grievances of the people to the British Parliament. By 1856, the British were ruling whole of India. Now, they cared little about Indians. The dissatisfaction in the public began to grow. People wanted to get rid of the British. The Sparks, 1855 to 1857. Taxes continued to ruin the peasants. In Bengal, the Santhals, who had lost their lands under new land rules, became desperate. In 1855, they rose in rebellion and massacred Europeans and their supporters alike. Discontent was breathing in the East Indian Company's army too. The white soldier gets huge pay, mentions to live in, servants, while we get a pittance and slow promotion. The Angres asks us to cross the sea, which is against our religion. Who is that Topiwala to abolish our age-old customs? We must drive out the Angres. Sipoy Mangal Pandey attacked the adjutant of his regiment and was executed. Thousands of other sepoys revolted. They were stripped of their uniforms, humiliated and put in irons. Few Englishmen had cared to understand Indian customs or the people's mind. Oh, proud Brahmin soldiers, do you know that the grease on the bullet you have to bite is made from the fat of cows and pigs? What? The white man has deceived us too. Soon, chapatis were sent from village to village to tell the people that their emperor would want their service. Yes, all my village men will be ready. Similarly, lotus flowers circulated among Indian soldiers. Death to the foreigner. The masses gave all help and shelter to the patriots. So students, under the new rule, the Santhals had become discontent. So they started to fight against the Europeans. They killed the Europeans and their servants too. There was a discontent in British army too. The Indian people in the British army came to know that the bullet which they use in the guns, they have to bite those bullets from their mouth. And these bullets are made out of cow and pig fats. And this discontent rose to a higher level. So, the sepoy, Mangal Pandey, fought against the Britishers and he was executed. The English did not care about the Indian customs. So, chapatis were sent from village to village. With these chapatis was the message that their native emperor would want their service. Similarly, a lotus flower was circulated among the Indian soldiers. The marses, that is, the villagers, helped these sepoys and the patriots in the fight. Revolt, 1857. Then, there was a violent outbreak at Meerut. The sepoys marched to Delhi. Long live our emperor, Bahadur Shah. The rebellion spread wider. Many landlords had lost their lands because of the British policies and they were sore. The white man's rules must end. Yes, we will help you. Due to this slow discontent, the revolt started at Meerut. The sepoys who had revolted marched towards Delhi. They were shouting the slogan in favor to Bahadur Shah Zafar. This fight spread wider. Many landlords who were discontent 
had lost their lands, they helped the revolt. The Fight for Freedom, 1857 Many former rulers like Begum Hazrat Mehal of Lucknow were bitter. The white man has taken away my kingdom. They joined the upsurge against the foreigner. Popular leaders like Maulavi Ahmadullah of Faizabad told the people, Rise, brother, rise. The Angres is ruining our land. The people rose everywhere, in Bareilly, Kanpur and Allahabad. Azimullah Khan told Tatya Tope, We should have Peshwa Nana Sahib as our leader in this war of independence. The Patriots pounced upon the British and fought pitched battles all over North India. Eighty years old, Kumar Singh of Bihar received a bullet in his wrist. Mother Ganga, this is my last offering to you. So students, many rulers like Hazrat Mehal of Lucknow were very angry. The English had taken away their kingdom. Many popular leaders like Maulavi Ahmadullah of Faizabad asked the common man to fight against the Angres. Azimullah Khan told Tatia Tope to make Nana Sahib the leader of that war of independence. All over the North India, the people fought against the Britishers in the field. Eighty years old Kuwar Singh of Bihar got a bullet on his wrist. He cut his hand and threw it in the Ganga river and said it was his last offering to the mother Ganga. Students, this lesson is from our freedom movement which is written by S.D. Savant. So students, this is all about the lesson. This is Anupsa saying thank you and goodbye.